I'm the operator with my pocket calculator. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, don't be afraid, I have only 120 slides. <laughs> okay, effective banking with modern tools, tools, tricks and tips for the modern banking in the early 20th century. Now you will not get a technical presentation, but I have made a little story to give you a, an input, an, an insight into the modern banking world of the 1920 years. How does it come that the mechanical engineers I am works in banking? He's well, Swiss. sorry? He's Swiss. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but I'm not a gnome. Okay, I was traveling to Basel in the springtime because in Basel we have every year the Mustermesse. This is a technical, or was at that time, a technical in and industrial fair where the professional just had to go. At the railway station of Basel, in the hall of the railway station, I met this gentleman, Ernst Billeter. I had to travel into the future to have a nice picture of him, because, but, well, it was the only one I got. He was there, and what, you know what he did? He sold out of a suitcase his Blitzrechner, lightning calculator, A1, this thing. As an, as an engineer, I just had to have one. So I bought it and went to the nearest restaurant to have a look at my new gadget. And you see, I raised the curiosity of the people there. <laughs> <laughs> and I was met by a nice elderly gentleman, Scrooge McDuck. He, is, he was, or he is, still is, the president of board of McDuck Banking, uh, McDuck Banking of Switzerland, MDBS in short. Hmm? We chatted quite a while, and as we separated, he had engaged me as chief technical officer of MDBS. The chief technical officer is responsible for all the calculating equipment in banking, in his banks. What do you have to do as a uh, CTO? No the supplies, blah, 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 blah. You can read, and I can spare my air. The first task I had was to look into the calculation of interest days, because this was quite a problem. Calculating of interest days in banking is not so easy as it seems, because there are different methods of calculation of the interest days, and it's a difficult task. Why? Well, you could count on the calendar, but this is a painful job. So I had to look for another solution. Are there solutions? Yes. Ah, the Swiss are famous. Loga had a solution. The Loga Termin Finder. Uh, and if you look carefully at this picture, you will see that there are four scales. It's in the form of a slide rule, but it has four scales. And you have here uh, and uh, 360 days. This is for the banks who count every month, even February, February, February as a 30-day month. And you have a second pair of scales with 365 days. This is for the banks who count the year for 365 days. This is the f are already two different methods for calculating the, the, the uh, interest days. But I found an even better solution. Oh, sorry. Oops. This one. Now, who knows this? I, th I suppose no many of you know this. This is a Nestle Termin Finder. Beautifully manufactured. Made of wood and celluloid. Very resistant. High quality scales and so on. I'm proud of this. I found it for 
uh, for about eight francs in a in a flea market, no, in a brockhound. So, uh, and uh, I did a lot of research, and uh, Jürgen Nestler and also Hans Peter Schaub told me that they didn't know this kind of Nestler slide rule. And here you see two more solutions for calculating the interest day. You have all, uh, again, four scales, and, oh, sorry. So, four scales, you can, um, the normal year and the Schaltjahr. I don't know the, the English term, do you know it? Leap year. Leap year, yes, thank you. 366 days. Hmm? Okay. Uh, the only problem was it's a bit more expensive as the Loga cardboard model. Uh, I tried to push it, but I had not taken in account the policy of MDBS avoid or lee or reduce cost and no luxury tools. And my boss wasn't very much satisfied with me. I suppose he has Scottish rules. Very quickly I had to realize I must buy the bullet and buy the cheaper Loga Terminfinder. And look what happened. Look what happened. The things fell apart. Really? I had to glue them to... Oh, it's, this is not quite the Swiss quality. Huh? I had to glue them together uh, and, and repair them and, and uh, try to say, uh, find a solution with, with Mr. Damon. Hmm? But uh, it was not so easy. And here I open a little bracket. Because after the Great War, after 1980, there was an a, a, a so-called billet de Damon affair. Why was it? Oh, sorry. I'm a bit, uh, there was a fierce commercial dispute in 1980 because Max Billiter, the one of the sons of Ernst Billiter, which we saw in, at the beginning of this show, uh, fought a battle against Heinrich Damon Schmidt. You have to know that Heinrich Damon Schmidt was of German origin, lived since 20 years in Switzerland, and became Swiss in 1915. One of the rule, uh, reasons behind it is that, for example, one of his sons was uh, held as a prisoner in France because, of course, he was also German and in, in the war the Germans were put into camps. And uh, Max Billiter said that Heinrich Damon is a papierle Schweizer. He is only made of cardboard. He is not a real, a real true Swiss. He's, so that's, he cannot produce Swiss quality into brackets again. This is Henry Heinrich Damon Schmidt. Uh, look at his nice dupe, his nice hair. Uh, here we are, because all the males in the, in the uh, Damon family went bald very early. Okay, uh, we will see Max Billiter a bit later again. Heinrich Damon responded with a three-sided pamphlet and made a big war against uh, Max Billiter. Max Billiter was at this time president of the uh, uh, the, the, the National Rechenwalzen. Hmm? This is also a, a, a bit of speciality of the Billiter family. They had a lot of different firms. But I will come to back to this. Okay, I close this bracket and now you, you will understand that I de didn't meant the, Swiss, the uh, remark about Swiss quality very earnestly. It was a bit of a joke. Now in accounting, in banking, in accounting, trading and exchange, you have to look for different solutions. Why? In accounting, you need, you need clear results. There is the mechanical calculator, the right thing to use. But in trading and exchange, you need a quick tool, 
a noiseless tool because we, you're ha uh, calling on, on the telephone, discussing on the, on the telephone with your opposite part, and you need precision also. And what is the solution? The cylindrical slide rule. At this time, we had three potential suppliers in Switzerland because of the Swiss quality. The Loga, of course, the Ernst Billet Bossert company at this time, founded by Ernst Senior, which we saw his picture at the start. His son, Ernst Junior, worked with him in this firm. And we had National Rechenwalzen AG, which was uh, uh, guided by Max Billeter, the other son of Ernst Billeter Senior. So Ernst Junior and Max are brothers, of course. Now, I had to select a supplier to give you an impression. At the Mustermesse Basel, the exhibition of Loga was, where, uh, was presented like this. Quite an impressive assortment. Here we have a beautiful model of a billeter, uh, sorry, a national Rechenwalzen, uh, Rechenwalze, uh, circular slide rule. And I had to tell my boss that I won, would like to buy Loga. And even my various boss couldn't say no to, to my suggestion. Loga is our choice. Why? They have a very interesting spectrum of products, of slide rules, cylindrical slide rules from 1.2 to 24 meters. They have a lot of specialized models, especially also for the banking sector. Wide range of manuals, instructions, leaflets, charts, and so on and so on. Accessories to their equipment and also good references. So the Loga logo proved, the golden Loga logo proved to be right in this case. This is what I would have liked to buy, but uh, the 24 meter jumbo cylindrical slide rule was a bit expensive. So uh, I, I came back and declared the 15 meter model as the standard equipment. Here you have a, an example of a model Z. This is a special banking model. And those of you, of you who can read the German will see the explanation. Uh, the important point is that you have here the, the indicator of the fractions for calculations, interest calculations. Another model is the model EE. E for einfach, simple. E and second E for English, uh, also specialized uh, indicators to make direct calculations to the uh, English pound and is used in our bank with all uh, the, the, the task uh, with uh, partners in, in the uh, Commonwealth and, England and Great Britain. In the Loga hardware, there is also a lot of uh, auxiliary equipment, like swivel arms, wall brackets, hairline indicators, and others, as lamps, talcum powder, uh, uh, protective uh, equipment, and so on. But they have also a lot of software, and we have started to, in our business to speak from, of hardware and software. Software like instruction manuals. This is the, re, the little red prayer booklet of the modern banker. On 27 pages you find instructions how to do banking with the uh, slide rules, circular slide rules with, of Loga. These are other examples. Rechenbeispiel, uh, example for calculation in uh, bookkeeping and banking. And these are tabulas which can be mounted on the foot of the slide rule, which is quite helpful because you have it directly in, in view. 
the fractional tables also and uh, decimal ta tabella for for uh, calculating uh, the, the British uh, currency into decimals. And as a, as a modern enterprise, we also have an information service. And as, as you can see, our information services doesn't hesitate to glean information also with our competitors, Credit Suisse, to name it. Oh, sorry, I wanted to give you an impression of modern banking office, but this is the wrong picture. <laughs> uh, Cashers desk at Commerzbank Banking. This is the place where this, where this uh, interest termin finder is used. Hmm? This is the foreign exchange office, and I want to uh, point out a few points. We have a modern telephone switchboard. We have a modern uh, indication of the open telephone lines, a wall clock to have exact timing, a wonderful electric lighting, and our, our employees are allowed to take their own, their seating, uh, who they like. Everyone has his individual seat. So you see, when we go 70 years into the future, what Google is doing, we are doing it already in 1920. At the back of the office are the telephone booths for the assist assistance bankers. They have a seating, of course, also, and watch out for the calculators, wall-mounted calculators, telephone, sliding doors so that they are not disturbing each other. This is director's office. <coughs> Sorry, this is director, director Hoppe from Dresdner Bank at Berlin and I suppose he's calculating his bonus. <laughs> <laughs> and, well, <laughs> um, <laughs> The logo girl of the month, uh, Heinrich Damon Schmidt was a clever man, and he knew exactly that. Uh, sorry for the sorry, ladies. Sex sells. Uh, um, no, no, it's not so terrible. Um, but you have noticed that banking is um, is a real male business in 1920. So he made a bit of advertising with nice girls. Wait a minute, you, the next picture is even better. <laughs> no, I, I like this girl, that's my favorite. Uh, look at the nice white apron she's wearing huh? to protect her closest. No, to be serious, look at the 24 meter jumbo. And what do we have here? A magnifier huh? to even have a better reading of the, of the uh, results. I found a, 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 quite a, a few of glass negatives in, in uh, the Loga Archive, and it was a bit, a, a bit uh, difficult to transmit them to positives. <coughs> okay, that's it. And I say thank you for your attention, and have a nice day. differently Shakespeare's plays. What's uh, the plan for next year? When? Well, it's always sometime in September, at a date very similar to this year, namely 21st and 20, oops, uh, 27th, 20, uh, 22nd of September 2018. So everybody, please uh, take out your calendars, your agendas, and write it down. Oh. What? Oh. Yeah. So. Uh, and again, we have a uh, we have a theme, and it's, if it's Shakespeare's plays, it has to be something with that. So it's from sonnets to sums. Okay. 
Do you know what to do? Everybody, take out the Go to the bookshop. Read your Shakespeare again. Find good quotes <laughs> to make nice presentations. Yeah. Um, everybody has to do so. So you recognize in the quotes your presentation, please. Um, yeah, very good. This is, it's at the Stratford Hotel. Um, the Brit and the English have also a certain tradition, namely to make a display that is uh, to call out and uh, for people and bring along their specific thing for this uh, theme, for display, and that is early British rules and secondly, long scale rules. So, again, dates we need, a certain uh, uh, here notice to intend the paper so that they know what's going on, deadlines and all that. And the important thing is they're really hurried to have those things, everything ready. You can read that all on the website. But first I have to give a warning or an information. First there is this place, Stratford upon Avon, uh, south of Birmingham. That's the place. <coughs> but there are several other Stratfords in Britain. Please, Stratford upon Avon. What else is on the, on, the, on the map? There is a place called Milton Keynes, which is actually not meant, but a place nearby. Actually, the place nearby is something about here, yes, uh, where we already have been in 2012, namely Bletchley Park. And this is just a reminder anybody traveling to Britain uh, that they have there the National Museum Computing, and uh, of course, there is also a display by the UK SRC, <coughs> by the UK a <coughs> slide, collect, slide rule collector. So, go along there, have a look even more, and if you've been there, just a refresher because uh, lots of that is refreshed because many things there belonged to Colin Burns and were sold uh, a year ago. So, plan, plan your trip. This is a view of the hotel, and most important is next to the date you wrote. In, uh, in your notes that you write down this web address, this URL, you know, UKSRC or UK, you should know that, hmm? and I am 2018.